20 meters. Okay. Well, everybody, welcome to the August presentation meeting. We have a very special guest this evening, honorary club member. The DX, oh, yes. Oh, I am. I forgot. The DX commander himself, huh. Callum McCormick, M0MCX. And uh, we're pleased that he was able to make some time for us. He's a very busy man, so it's a pleasure to have him. Callum, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Well, a very good day. Now, can you all hear me all right? I'm not too loud or muffled or anything. Well, John and I were chatting about, um, you know, what we could what we could talk about um, tonight. So um, we thought we'd, I mean, quite a lot of you apparently in your club, you you go about portable, you know, you enjoy your, your, your RF and you can get out and about. And I went, I went out and about, uh, not as much as I like to, but you know, when you do that, um, not so much spur at the moment. You go, oh, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to do X, aren't you? You know, you're going to go to a park or you're going to you're going to light up something, you know, with your RF and your travel. So I just want you to understand the investment that you put in to yourself when you do that. You know, you you you, you load up your car, your truck, whatever, in the morning. You know, and you if you've done it before, you've got a checklist. If you haven't done it before, you get two miles down the road and remember that you've forgotten the whatever it is turn around come back we do know of course of people that have gone you know two hours down the road only room to to mike mk8 mrd i think forgot something you know some connector or whatever else but anyway once you once you've rehearsed that a couple of times you know what you're doing you get stuck in a bit of a rut you know you get to the other side you um it's a nice day maybe a bit of shade you might have one of those little collapsible tables and you put your whatever it is you know one of those batteries, maybe. Um, if you can plug into the mains, I don't know. We don't have that around here. It's, it's all, you know, if we're out and about, it'll be, it'll be on battery power. And whatever. I happen to have, I mean, I'm not a backpack guy, so I don't really give a shit, you know, what I take with me. But it's normally because I happen to have a TS590 spare. as my spare sort of portable. It's a nice radio. It gives me 100 watts. doesn't suck too much out of the battery, so I can get a good four hours easily, you know. I've got a couple of old gel batteries, not the new fancy things, you know, just 80 amp hour you know, luggable <laughs> things. Now, I went out and in the dark about 18 months ago uh, and I drove for about half an hour and I got to where I wanted to go and I anticipated that it would take me 20 minutes, 25 minutes to, to set up. It actually took me well over an hour. One, because I hadn't rehearsed, and two, because I'd never put anything up in the dark before. So I'm as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, I've got to change things, right? This particular antenna I use called the DX Commander Expedition. but And I have since changed it, so it should be about a 10-minute setup now. But it got me thinking because one of the reasons that people use, let's say, an NFED, which is resonant on every harmonic, isn't it? So you've got an 80 metre, which is you know, it's quite a lot, isn't it? 80 metre halfway, it'll be 40 metres of wire. But they normally do 40, don't they? You get 40 and 20, and I think you get 15 out of that, whatever. And they got a half wave. And that is really simple, isn't it? Because we've got maybe a 49 or a 64 to 1 transformer. And I was going to, can I hit a button? Of it? Is that on here? Oh, here we are, yeah. Is that, it doesn't look in focus. Hang on a minute, chap. Sorry about this. Uh, let's just uh, dial that in so you get a nice sharp image. Ish, give or take. Uh, and it's nice and easy because you've got this. I mean, I happen to have a 64 to 1 uh, myself. 64 to 1 transform. It's very easy. You know, you get your radio here, a uh, bit of coax to this, and then it's up over, a, you know, over a tree or something and along. Uh, and you cut it, you get it right, and it generally just works, certainly on 40 and uh and 20 you know and that sort of thing and it's quick now I, i'm not here to say what antenna's best because there is a trade-off isn't there between how quickly do we want to get on the air and how efficient we want to be because sometimes the two don't marry up i don't know i just thought is there a time cost quality triangle in here somewhere <laughs> you know but it is you know you've already spent you know two hours of your day 
pack of the car, your pack lunch, whatever, you know, your rations, getting your hot drink ready and your cold drink ready and everything else. And you go out to these parks. And, and it's just a debate I'm having with you to say you do all that so you can save five minutes at the other end by putting an end fed up. All right. Um, some people say, oh, we know you don't like end feds, Callum. It's not that I don't like end feds, but after years of experience of listening to people calling me, it generally, the, it's just for some reason, uh, if that's my, if that's my S meter, right. Um, you know, in, in the main, you know, my, my end feds, I, I'm getting this, you know, there's S zero and there's nine. And then all the other antennas are normally over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not that I'm having a go at the end feds because I mean, if they're that good, I would use one, you know. And we, we, we've we sold a few because I had Mike make me up a few 64 to ones. Um, I think there's a bit of loss maybe in the transformer. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But um, if you've only got five minutes spare and you want to do a 20 minute activation, I think an end feds great, right? I honestly believe. For some reason, I don't know why I am. I have not got the maths or anything else. I just get the feeling you're six dB down somewhere, and I don't know why. Okay, we can debate that another. Well, you can you can get me invite me on another day, and we'll have a debate <laughs> about end feds. By the way, at any point in time, if you want to come off mute and heckle me, I'm more than happy with that. Right. Okay, so uh, let's just look at the options or what we got. If if we go out, we can we can, we'll keep our tree. All right, we'll put our tree here if you like. Um, so <clears throat> we're into the amount of time it takes us to put up an efficient antenna and what's best. Um, I think the way out of this is first of all, let me do a little diagram, and then I've got uh, over on this monitor here. I've set up a couple of odds and ends that we can we can have a look at. I used to be a great supporter of the dipole, right? particularly for 40 metres. And I still am, to a greater extent. Uh, it's quite easy. This is 30-something feet in your money, isn't it? Uh, and then a bit of coax down to a radio. So all you need <clears throat> is something probably 10, 12 foot high, to be honest. If this is a daytime activation and you just want to get out 300 miles, all right? So I'm in Birmingham during the day. I'll get Netherlands and Germany. I know the maximum during the day, you know, it's three or 400 miles. It just is. It's the way it is. Uh, and then the other antenna we can use is um, if you've got a dipole. The problem is with a dipole is that how do we how do we go about making this? You've got the linked dipole haven't you, where, let's just expand this little bit, linked dipole, where you've got this wire that effectively has a join in it with some sort of cord in a different colour. And then you come along, you go, oh, now I want 40 metres, and you put a link in, it's called a linked dipole. And that, that extends it, doesn't it? Uh, I think that's great, great idea. So you might have to pull it down a bit, faff about with it, because uh, a dipole is you need inverted V, ideally. You know, you you need 10, 12 feet, really. You can do it on about four feet. Anything under four feet, you start losing a bit of signal. I've noticed, but uh, you, you, 10, 12 feet seems to be about a nice height. About 20 feet, even better, you get a better match. But anyway, it still works down, down below. Then you've got the guy points as well. Then you need a bit of paracord, and then you've got to go over there and stick it in the ground, and you've got to go over here and stick it in the ground. And multi-banding is just hard. So unless you do the linked thing, then we're into a fan dipole. And this is for our day out, remember. And for a fan dipole, you know, is, you know you've got maybe 20 there. So you've got 40 and, and 15 on the big one. You can get 20 here. You can probably hit the ATU button. You'll probably get 10 on that as well. That's a bit of a hassle. It makes you think, you know, I'm I'll just go back to my outfit, to be honest, you know, because it just it just works. I'm saving five minutes of my time, all right? Bearing in mind, you have, as we've already covered, invested two hours of your time already. So now 
This assumes, you know what a DX Commander is, and I think most of you at the club do know, and you've seen one and everything else, but my favourite is um, a three-element expedition DX Commander where you've got effectively a 40-metre, a 20-metre, and a, another metre. So at the moment, I did 10, actually, put 10 there. Uh, and I developed a way with a bit of shot cord and some slots and stuff to get this thing up. John and I did it the other day. It's about seven or eight minutes. So there's no excuse now. But what is the difference, right? Because what is going to happen? A low to the ground dipole is fantastic for your zero to 200 mile guy. And then your vertical starts competing on 40 anyway, three or 400 miles. And uh, same on 20, actually. 20 will start to outperform it quite rapidly. So um, let us look at the difference. I've got a monitor here. You can't see, can you? Can you see that there? No, you go. Uh, just to my left. So there's a button here where I can screen share. And I think it's screen three. Now, can you see this little monitor thing here? And I've got one here as well, yeah? Yeah, I'm getting a nod. Yep. Okay. Yep. As long as you've got a fairly reasonable monitor, you should be able to see it. So on a phone, it might be difficult. I'll try and zoom it up. So this is um, it's a bit of software. It's called MMANA, and it just means I can draw. You can see it's a bit of inverted V dipole here. Okay, and I've got it in new money at three meters, which is about 10, 11, 12 feet. Plus, you've got the V here. And I'm just telling you, that's two meters. So this is about 15, 16 feet. So you would need, you know, a tennis ball and a bit of paracord, chuck it over a tree. Uh, yeah, I assume you can get down. So this is a horizontal antenna. OK, I'm going to click a button here and I'm going to move over to something called the far field plot. In fact, we can make that pretty, I think, by pressing this button. Whoa, it's got the wrong screen. Hold on a minute. okay and then i can move this back to there oh i think you can see this pretty picture um whoa control oh, i can move it around so here is our dipole is drawn north south and you can see it's a tiny bit more gain east west just look for the nods that you can see that yeah there's uh, andy nodding yeah it looks good now, interesting enough, it's almost omnidirectional because I can say I want to run around this at, say, 30 degrees off the horizon, which in the main during the day, most of your contacts are going to be. Or, or, and I'm just spinning around here. I don't know if you can read this, but that says 1.1 bananas at the top. And over here, it says 3.8. So on average... Give or take, you're not going to be more than about 3 dB um, difference between north, south, east, west. So it's, it's nearly on the direction. And, and it's nice. You get there, a nice bubble of RF, works very well. Um, and there's a horizontal dipole. Okay, so now, uh, and I'll just, uh, you can't see this, I'm just taking a rain check at, someone remember this number for me. 20 degrees off the horizon, that's giving me, it says, 0.8 dBi. 0.8, one, one banana. There we are. Okay, so I'll click the share screen again. One banana. So now this time I've drawn a, a vertical. Uh, it's very simple. This is right on the ground, feed points on the ground, and I've told it that it's got 16 small radials there's no extra height and there we go so we'll just see what that does and this gives us a different pattern we could overlay the two Ooh, let me quickly do that file save the far fields it's basic typo <laughs> yeah we have some fun in a minute um right so at 20 degrees, we said it was uh, one banana. Well, this is 1.1 bananas, which is why on my live stream, in the main, in the main, I, I genuinely, honestly believed 
that my vertical wouldn't work for daytime for 40 meters. But I mean, if you've listened, I mean, the pileups are okay, I'm running 400 watts. But, I, mean, I mean, maybe tomorrow I might just drop it down to 100. It's 6 dB, okay? So it's about an S point, let's face it. But uh, in the main, I'm 400 watts, but only because. I want to keep the frequency and I want people to hear me clearly and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I could easily drop that down. But I, I'm amazed that it works so well. Uh, whatever. You don't need a DX commander to do that, by the way. You can, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be straight up in the air. It could be at an angle. Get your tennis ball again, you know, throw it over a tree, just pull it over. A um, few ground radials on a couple of connectors, just scatter them out. You'd be on. I must admit, the NFED is still looking you know, kind of handy, you know? I don't know. I think we need to do proper test NFED versus uh, DX Commander one day, but, but there we are. Let's share the screen again and uh, see what else we've got going on here. So, um, share. So that's it. Now, I saved something a minute ago so we can overlay the two, which is quite interesting. But because you can see at the top of this, there's this big hole, but I don't seem to get the hole. Maybe it's because there's enough. Very rarely do I speak to someone 50 miles away. And if I do on 40 meters, they can plumb in and hear me anyway because we use the ground wave. You see, the thing is, we are a much smaller country than you. So 40 meters, we can cover the whole country. But you, you can't, can you? You know, you, you, you can't. You know, if you're on the, the East Coast, there's no way during the day you can copy the West Coast, you know, for instance. In the UK, now, uh, you know, a fairly reliable 450-mile um, circumference, I would say. Uh, I'd have to do the analysis, but, you know, I've got a fellow called David always calls me, for instance, in the Orkney Islands. There are a couple of people from the Netherlands. They're maybe 300 miles away. A couple of people in uh, Germany, 400 miles away, maybe. The four or 500 miles is the maximum anyway on 40 meters. Interesting. Now, let's go back to this uh, share screen. I hope you're having a reasonably good time, chaps. It's quite fun, isn't it? I'm here. I'm just the clown for the entertainment. I'm well aware of it. Uh, tools compare. Oh, here we go. Look. So this is a compare. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, compare load. Here we are. Basic dipole. Oh, yes. We can color this in actually. Basic dipole, I think. Um, we can make red for me. Oh, that was the other one. So we'll make this one blue just for fun. And we will zoom this up a bit. It's a little bit deceiving in a funny sort of way, but uh, so the red is our vertical. This is on average ground. It's not by the sea. All right. We'll do that in a minute. And then the blue is our dipole. As I was saying, uh, the kind of trade off is 10, 20, probably 23 degrees. 30 degrees is fine, but I don't believe many of my contacts are over 30 degrees anyway. I used to think they were, and I used to think all my contacts were at the top of this bubble. But there's people telling me, and I'm receiving them really, really well. It just can't be. So interesting. I well, with the port, with that dipole, you're launching that signal higher, so you're getting NVES off of that than more than you would off the. Vert. You are, and I think on 80 meters in the evening or in the morning, that would be really nice. Um, but that funny. I mean, I used to. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying, really. I mean, it's an open debate. I, I, I'm just, I'm just amazed that I do so well. I, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, I use a vertical exclusive for my transmit, not necessarily for my receive, but I use it for my transmit, and I'm just getting out so well. I, I just find it amazing. But anyway, let's uh, get rid of this because I, I was just going to show you a bit of fun look. Um, let's go down the DX route now, okay? So what we can do is we can say, we'll just take an arbitrary number, it doesn't matter, five degrees off the horizon, I'll just go around here. And that not, that says minus 5.4 bananas at the top here. I'll do the same with the dipole. 
five degrees off the right. So then we're now on, say, 20 metres. So it's minus 10, minus 11 there. There's not a lot in it, actually. It's all minus 10, 11. So we're about 6 dB down, uh, 5, 6 dB down on the dipole than we were. So in other words, it's not that it's not that you're not going to get DX on a, on a low to the ground dipole. You will. You'll just be a bit quieter. That's all it is. Share screen. Screen three. Uh, I was going to have a bit of fun with you. So we would, we took that at minus five degrees. Here we are. Minus 5.4. We can have some fun. We can, we can tell this thing. Conductivity of seawater is 5,000 millisiemens per meter. It was on... Hang on, it was on five, wasn't it? Ground set up. Yeah, it was on five. Five. The seawater to RF looks like um, like copper. Oh, here we go. Look. So this is quite interesting. Uh, so if we come down to five, five I'll, pretty, I'll hit this button here. Five. Just show me five degrees. So now we've got five point four. We're there at minus. 4.5. So we're 10 dB. So that's why when Tom, he went, he walked around the Isle of Arran with that DX Commander Expedition. I think he used to put up 40, 20, and 10. That's what he did. And uh, he walked. It's about 90 miles. He did it in seven days, but he's one of these army sort of guys. He can do things like that. And he had, what's the new icon? The little one is, I think, 705, I think. And uh, so he was, he was five or 10 watts or something. But of course he was right down by the beach. And uh, so it was like a hundred watts. It was like a hundred watts. Of course he could hear ten times better as well. So with ten dB. So ten dB is you know, ten times. That's fascinating. Down by the sea. You can't you can't replicate that, by the way, in 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 the in the middle of the countryside. You just can't replicate it. Um you can do the best you can and save yourself maybe a d a dB or so by investing, you know. A couple of hundred thousand dollars in copper wire. But a year into, I actually got to Roly once to admit on a live stream, it doesn't matter what you do, best you're going to be able to achieve to improve your vertical is about 3 dB. I said, come on, mate, that's surely, that's the argument. He said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's 3 dB. No matter what you do, unless you're down by the coast. So if you get the opportunity uh, to go down by the beach, Bend down by the ocean and stick up a vertical and get on 20 meters, uh, you'll be away. Particularly if you can, um, particularly if you run some power as well. I, I'm sure I might have told you this story before. I can't remember, but did I, did, John, do you remember once I told you that in 2014, so nine years ago, we went away as a family? So the kids were quite young, actually, thinking about it. Uh, I took all this gear. I, I had my, my I had my nine ninety with me. I thought I can't be bothered taking a power supply and stuff. I'll just take the nine ninety. Uh, we went in two cars. My car was full. It was like a full on field day excursion for the two weeks. I had aluminium poles strapped to the roof rack and everything. Incidentally, when I got down and I was going to put dipoles up, I was so convinced dipoles would was the way dipoles in the Argus. And uh, because for years people have told me verticals don't work, right? Anyway, so I put this, I, I said to Wendy, I said, this endless breeze at 25, 30 knots or miles an hour, you know, and sometimes a bit stronger. I don't think I'll be able to put this stuff up. The only thing I, I have got a couple of telescopic poles um, because I used to buy 25 telescopic poles at a time and put a sticker on it. It said, Dear Commander, right? I used to carry them around in the boots of my car and sell them at clubs, you know. But um, so I put up, I didn't know it at the time, put up a DS Commander. And, uh, but I told Wendy, I think she's heard the story once, so I didn't realise she could hear. But I told Wendy, we need to take the amplifier because the C attenuates the signal, right? And so we took the Acon 2000 down. I need to put my bloody back out again because it weighs, you know, more than three children and um oh what's happened uh steve steve shared his screen steve stop sharing your screen buddy 
we we could force him to stop it. View options. Very right. well. Well yeah. done. Thanks, Steve. Well done. Anyway, to cut long story short. I put up a vertical. I I actually put up a screen share. That was the prototype, wasn't it? It kind of was, but I put up. I just put up this. Okay, just this. Um, oh, hang on, you can't see. Uh, I just put a telescopic pole with a bit of wire, and the top of the wire was sticking out the top of the pole. I don't, I'll find. I uh, might be able to find a picture actually as we chat. And uh, and I just ran. I think I had four radials. Four radials, because that's what it said in the book. Minimum you need four radials. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Um, and then put on the amplifier. Now, in this country, we're allowed um, 400 watts. But, uh, and I don't care if you're recording this nine years ago. In any way, a confession, right? There's no evidence. <laughs> it might well be a confession, but you haven't got the evidence. Right? So, but I ran um, Callum stuff about 1500 watts on this vertical by the coast okay and if you if you work it out i've now got a 10 db kick over 15 15 1.5 kilowatts that's the same as someone inland doing 15,000 watts right but the thing is i could actually hear this is on 40 meters you know two three in the morning i could hear the because my ears were so good i could hear the guy with a g5 rv at 100 watts so I will say to people, I don't mind if you run a lot of power, if you can hear the little guy as well, you know. But um, absolutely hilarious. 2014, August, Nook. Oh, here we are. I will stop sharing that screen and share this one now. But, um, yeah, it was uh, it was good fun. Share screen. This, this was it. Uh, hopefully you can see. Um, you see that picture? Yep. Yeah. That's just the bottom of a, of a pole. And, and and this is a home brew thing. I knocked, I think I actually made this because I took spares, everything with me. There's the 990. That was, there's the ocean just, just at the top of the picture. Um, It was just, that was looking out the window. So when the tide was in, I was uh, within the wavelength. Ah, and I put three up, which probably gave me, what do you think, John, another five dB? Oh, easy. Another five. Yeah. Well, let's say it was six dB. Okay, so I'm now going from uh, that's double. double and double again. So 15 to add. So you couldn't, someone inland doing 60,000 watts. Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh, and these, this was 40, you see. Oh. Nice little night shot, 40. So, but, ah, here we are. Oh, my goodness. Found a picture. Now, I've still got this component here, actually. This is... um. It's obviously an SO239 connector. And and look how in a few days everything rusts. Can you can you see the rust on that yeah. bolt there? Amazing, isn't it? So I come out here, I twist it around. I even have my soldering gun. Oh no, I've got four elements coming off this. I had 20, 15, 10, and 6, actually. Um, because this one was um not that one. Oh, there we are. This was a different part. So this is half a pole, if you know what I mean, 20, 20 and, and downwards. And that was an experiment at four, because at the top of this, weirdly enough, that is a dipole, because I was so convinced dipoles were better uh, at the time. This is quite interesting. This, um, this wire here uh, comes past this guy point. And the reason for this zip tie coming around here is because, and I wonder if we've got the picture of this. Oh, I've added a few more. But I effectively, I blew, I don't know where it is. I blew that apart. There was, um, uh, as somebody explained to me, it's capacitance yep. between the two. And this, I don't know, is it? Is it starting to blow apart there? Look. Yeah, you're melting the insulation off of it. Look. Yeah, fascinating. Making a little blast furnace there. Yeah, indeed. And then I think so. That was twenty fourteen, but it must have been twenty thirteen when we went down. Um. Oh yeah. So that's the first time. That's the first time we went down. There it is. There. Lovely little place. 
very expensive. It was owned by um, some TV personality in the UK. I think Wendy took that for me. Oh, there we are. So that I think that's probably the very first experiment of creating a, two elements on a on a single vertical. Yeah. Oh, is this where it blows up? I must have the picture somewhere. There it is. <laughs> it blew up, and the SWR went. Uh, I tried putting a H, a coil actually for forty meters. That was that was quite fun as well. Couldn't quite get the match, but that's because well, that's because I didn't have Roly as a friend at the time. <laughs> uh, that's where it went. Pop that piece of uh, wire. I was just amazed, which is why we go all stainless now. Um, the bolts here, the nuts, sorry, are stainless. I think the bolts were stainless, but these washers were galvanized. It doesn't take very long for it all to go off, does it? I was looking at the chat, and Darcy um, had taken his DX Commander expedition down to the Outer Banks and had the same experience. And mm. uh, I've had mine down in the Caribbean twice. And uh, I can tell you, it's a big, it's a big difference from road. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? I run the same setup, the forty, twenty, and ten. Okay. On on the on the. Uh, so let me ask you, Callum, because you go back to some yeah. of those old pictures. Are there were, were those the sort of um, experimental or the first DX Commander templates? You know the the plates, and because you've you've really upgraded since then. Yeah, I mean, that, this was, I mean, I didn't even know, you got to remember, I didn't even know this was going to be a business. Um, I just I had no idea, you know. I think I've got some of the original, uh, if you if you wait a few moments, 2015. And then I think I move over to a different thing. So, documents, the X Commander. Good Lord. Um, drawings, pictures, publicity, photos. <laughs> yeah, I've never put the radials in the ocean. I might try that this year. We'll see. But um, just a little bit, Darcy. Don't go, don't go just... with that. <laughs> no, I mean, we're right there, 15 feet from the water. So <clears throat> it's not hard. Not At about hard. two meet two meters in. And uh it it helps some. Now, if it's bare wire, it's even better, but uh, so this is, oh gosh, that old nasty wire we used to supply and everything. Uh, so that's 2017. So it already come on actually quite a while, but, um, s s somewhere in there, this whole DX commander world, we've got, um, I'll stop sharing a minute. You can see what I'm doing. I've got the original, uh, it's, fascinating stuff actually how how it how it kind of developed uh probably under products oh i don't know i, I don't want to waste your time it, it, it's quite good fun oh i've done some presentations is they are they here oh no yeah but just looking at looking at that stuff it's like oh yeah i think i've got some of that in my garage you know i can <laughs> make right. some yeah. of that you know yeah that that is it oh the old ground plate Oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, this is the sort of thing I was originally into. Yeah, like this. Yeah. <laughs> Quarter yeah. inch thick aluminium. <laughs> that's all I could get hold of, you know. That's um, finished nicely. Yeah, I think I took a sander to that or something, you know. Uh, so yeah, guys, radiating, uh, fully built extension. The trouble is I can't uh ah, well whatever. I know when I went there. down to the islands in 2018 the first time yeah that I took you didn't even have the expedition out, you had just the poles, you had just gotten the poles. Oh, that's and I I asked you to send me a set of plates and I modified the plates to wow. to do the prototype of that. And yeah. Ah. yeah, it was uh I took that and was on the beach with that one. And then when I was down this past year, we did the DX commander and I had a 10 through 40 off center fed dipole. 
Okay. Oh, tell me about that. Yeah. So the DX commander outperformed the dipole and the dipole was at 50 feet. So Ah, on 40 meters, it was a toss up. And on 10 meters, it was a toss up, but on 20 meters and 15 meters, that vertical just ate up that, that, um, off center fed dipole. It was much better. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, that was my first production dance commander base. Wow. Wow. Big yeah. change. Yeah, look, I, I even had to drill little holes for this SO239. I imagine that wasn't cheap. No. Well, I, I sold these for next to nothing, actually, but. Uh, Oh, that's right. And then I had somebody uh, water jet these components for me. They're really small looking. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't afford to make them any bigger. Mm. Yeah. So, Callum, can you talk a little bit about that development? Like, do you take uh, ideas from people? And because, you know, I go on. No. You do it all yourself. Never, never take an idea. Oh, look, the original loop. With a with a, and I was using a duffel coat button. I bought fucking thousands of these. <laughs> In the end, we never used. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I I made twenty of these. Okay. So this is this is one of the twenty, uh, and I took it to a little a mini ham fest, you know, and I, I sold seven or eight, I think for about a hundred dollars, you know, with the pole and. In those days, the strap line was just to add wire because I didn't have any blooming wire. <laughs> and there were some brave people who actually bought them. And they needed about 10 minutes to talk it through with me. They go, oh, I can see this working. Yeah, all right, I'll take one. So, yeah, absolutely fascinating. I've never, on the way, we stopped at, and one day I will find the notebook. But we we stopped at a... We call them a service station on the motorway, on the big, you know, three lane, you know, thing. And I, I just remember this drawing because I was trying to find a way of getting an SO239, you know, connected to a plate and then another one and and how it just how it would work. And would I bend it up? Would I have one that I would you know, weld on? And oh, I didn't I didn't know. But it came to me because I'm uh, apparently one of these people that can um, visualize things in front of me, um, you know, and I can spin it around, look underneath it and everything else. Once, once I've got the idea of it. But what I've discovered is that um, bigger is kind of better on the DX Commander front. You know, wider plates, wider plates, heavier plates. I mean, the plates now are three eighths of an inch thick in a heavy duty marine poly something. Uh the new plates that just come in, all in grey, you know. Yeah, but I, I I I mean that's the development is frozen now, honestly. I think I've all I've got to do is I'm gonna build a classic, a signature nine, a rapid, a twelve, and an eighteen again from scratch and redo the cut charts because I honestly believe that a do- a vertical for 20 meters in the UK should be exactly the same as a vertical in America. This business of cutting it two inches long and then spending all afternoon tuning it, I honestly believe we shouldn't be doing that. I should just get the numbers right and tell you, you know, get your tape measure. And you count off, you know, 167 and a half inches and just cut the bloody thing. It should just work. So I'll do that, and then that's development frozen. Then you think, oh, well, what are you going to do for the rest of your life, Callum? Well, we've got Project X, which I can't tell you about. <laughs> but there is a factory in the UK that can make most of what I want. And, uh, yeah. It's going to be the so, Kenwood 999? It'll be the, <laughs> the DX Commander 990, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you got my We will job. not tell anyone, Callum. We will <laughs> not say anything. <laughs> There's, there's, uh, it, it's, 
it is brilliant. It is brilliant. I need the time, and I mean, I've been spending. You know, we spent a couple of years saving money to afford the development for this. Because I'm going to have to buy probably a minimum of a hundred, and they're going to be very expensive. So, I'll just write uh, me down for number one. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I think nearly everybody in there, you'll go. Well, you know, if I'm spending two thousand dollars on a radio, whatever, I'm going to spend two thousand dollars on one of these. Yeah. So it will be. Yeah, it's it's an antenna that I'm not going to tell you anymore. Shut up, Callum. <laughs> but, Darn it! I was working them too. It, I, I just want an HF antenna, multiband that just works. Yep. And um, and no one can see it. Yeah, transparent aluminum. <laughs> ah, yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, what is the? <laughs> yeah, computer. Yeah, computer. <laughs> you got the accent. See, I can't do that. But well, ah, I'm sure you could. Thank you so much, Calum. I know it's late over there, so I won't hold you. Uh, well, okay. So the, the reason I do these club, what I've noticed. When I used to do club meetings, you know, on Zoom and things like that, particularly over the COVID thing, is, you know, I would have quite a strict regime and I would say, you know, I'd get to the end of my presentation. That was it. But what I've noticed is that as long as there's just some data, like the difference between a vertical and a dipole and, yeah. you know, and just getting people to visualize some data, the rest of it, let's be honest about it, is I'm entertaining you and you're good fun and entertaining me back. And so we're all having a good time because... Yeah, it's ham radio supposed to be fun, you know, at the end of the day. So little bits of data. And this, you know, th th this picture here, I mean, I'm actually quite proud of this, that I I found this because um, it was quite a good big part of my life, you know, putting this together. Um, yeah, I've still got some everything. of those. I've still got some of those plates. Maybe I should auction them off. You that know. should be for the museum. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. The DS Commander Museum. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, John, you you were you were wrapping up then, and I cut you. Cut you oh, you're fine. I mean, I I I know it's late over there. It's quarter to midnight. I yeah, didn't know yeah. if you wanted to keep going, or you know, if you've had, I'll open it up for a couple of questions if somebody wants to ask. A couple oh, I think we could we could do that. I think we should have a, a couple of minutes. Uh, so this was a couple of good questions actually. Somebody asked me about the development. You know, because no one else has done anything like this. I haven't been able to. I'm glad I haven't been able to copy anybody. You know. Yep. There's been a lot of trial and error, to be honest. Sure. Anybody have any questions? Let's unmute and go ahead and shoot. Hey, Calum. Uh, this is Brian. Uh, just going, uh, following up on the development piece. Um, mm. Did you did you ever, was there an aha moment that you had? Um, or was it just a bunch of gradual steps where you, was there a moment when you knew you really had something or a, or one specific part of the, or the antenna that you knew that, man, I've got this now? The aha moment is when I had that little SO239 dub dipole center and I had to work out that the center went up that way, you know, um, and, and I put more than one wire. Um, and that was a bit of a, because that wasn't in the books, if you know what I mean. And uh, what I discovered was that, uh, I haven't done the final maths on this really, but where as a fan dipole, if we turn a fan dipole ups, upside down, they look like this, don't they? Fan dipoles. All different lengths. But what I've discovered is that we should be doing it the other way around. Is that fan dipoles, uh, if we put the separation here, if you can see that, you put the separation at the feed point, you get a better bandwidth. So, uh, which is why a DX command, I, I, these plates are getting bigger now. But, so we have the separation. Um, uh, you know, about eight inches apart, uh, and they. If I taper these, if I come up to a to a taper, it doesn't seem to matter because I've got the separation at the high current point. And I mean, that's the only. But I have I haven't I haven't found a minimum amount or a maximum amount or whatever else. I just fire. Just to be honest, we have a standard cardboard box, and if it fits in that, it's good enough, right? <laughs> and it just works. But I've never actually drilled smaller and smaller holes and got them closer and closer together. But when I first made them, I wasn't getting very good match because I believed the feed point, all the elements were calming off uh, together. You know, right at the bottom. What do you think about that, John? By the way, 
yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's because you're using a ground plane versus the second half of the antenna. You know, when you do a fan dipole, they're all at the same point. But since you're using a ground plane, that's going to give yeah. you the ground reflectivity that you need. And having them uh-huh. separated is yeah, going to okay. help with because you get the closer they get, the more inductance you get, right? Yes, I so, but yeah, you could be right there, wouldn't yep. you? Yes. So having to, you know, again, if it was a fan dipole and you weren't using that ground plane then yes, you want those feed points close together and the ends apart for the voltage. But yeah. when you're high current with the reflectivity of the ground, the inductance is going to be there. So you want those mm. things separated. That's at least the theory I would think it would be. Yeah. I may be 100% wrong. There, there was one other aha moment. Now, who was talking? I can't remember. Brian. Brian or Ryan? Brian. Brian. Or KB. Okay. Brian, the other, the other thing that... um. I discovered completely by accident was that a 40 meter vertical, um, let's say is resonant on 7.25 megahertz, then three 7.2s are going to be uh, 21.6 plus three of these seven five. So 21.75 mathematically would be the next resonant harmonic. And it used to really piss me off because I'm thinking, how am I going to get this bloody thing to tune? Because it would be great to make a commercial product that you got 15 and 21. But actually only in the last six months I've worked out why this particular hack works. But anyway, I accidentally, I just cut a long piece of wire, went up the pole and came back down a bit. uh, And I was getting a tune on, let's say, 7.25 and 21.5 three whatever with big bandwidths on either but i never never quite knew why i never quite knew genuinely why now i actually made a video about it in the end because i've worked it out and it's all to do with um i'll start a new page it's all to do with if you just take an element or take ground mounted vertical an element and you put a loading coil so you get this you get this harmonic business right which is about times three. So if you've got seven and then you've got 21-ish, if you put a loading coil in here, small loading coil, you you will get this 21 to move up. You can, you can force that up to 22, 23. Obviously, the antenna's got to become a bit shorter to compensate for it on its, on its main resonant frequency. It's fundamental. But the more you push this loading coil up until it's right at the top, and in fact, I've recently done the experiment on a seven meter pole with a loading coil. God, I must have a lot here. I've pushed, so this loads it for seven megahertz. Bearing in mind, it's it's about three quarters the, the original size. Hundreds of t- there's about a hundred windings here across about two foot of coil, one inch coil it is. Uh, and I've pushed the harmonic all the way down to 14 megahertz. Uh, so this is a single element that does 14 and 7. It's quite fascinating. But, so in other words, when you put the loading coil up, you can move the third harmonic down, which is why when a, a, a 9 meter signature 9, we can come up and come back quite a lot, is that we let, we are taking the third harmonic at 21.8 whatever else and bringing it down because there's a bit of loading up here so we can get you know 7.2 whatever you know and 21.3 which technically you shouldn't have but anyway that was the other aha moment it's all about coils and loading and and whereabouts oh and i did a hundred google searches um how a coil affects the third harmonic I uh, couldn't find it. Well, when you I, when you're moving up that antenna, you're yeah. moving the capacitance, right? Y- yes. So as you move the capacitance up, you're going to drive that harmonic down, right? Down. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's the inverse of separating them at the bottom, where you've got the inductance. Uh, okay. Right? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I could have asked you all along, John. That's brilliant. Uh, but no, that, I would have actually... never. I would never would have thought about it. Okay. I just know if you go to like a center load. Yeah, get wider bandwidth. 
than you do uh, okay. the bottom load. So if you take an 80 yeah. meter 80 meter antenna and you coal load it at the bottom, yeah. the bandwidth the the SWR curve is much narrower than if you center load it or top load it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's due to capacitive capacitance. Yeah. Well. yeah. So that that was my way out of the problem with the twelve point four because the twelve point four pole. I mean, it's quite long. I've managed to put a coil here, so I get eighty on. I don't know, seventy percent of the size it should be on. I get eighty, and this is giving me thirty. And my results on thirty are too good. You know, you run it on whisper; it's just too good. So I've got a funny feeling we're getting a uh, a quarter wave plus a quarter, a loaded quarter wave. Maybe, maybe it's it's fascinating. I mean, the other the next ah, oh, one more aha uh -huh, <laughs> is I've got a funny feeling a DX commander. If we took the seventeen meter element and did this to it, we should get seventeen and a six meter band, m m tunable. Eighteen times four will give you four. No. 18 times 3 gives you, what, uh, 36? Yeah, 66, so close. I'm sure it is. What yeah. is uh, what's 18 times 18. 3? 3, 8, 24, 54 megahertz, is it? Right, right, yeah. Should be right in there. Yeah. yeah. So take that 54. We should be able to get that down to wherever we want. Yeah. I, I mean, think a lot of people, around here, we want 50.15. Right? That's about right. So SSB, yeah. I think Bill had a question for you, Bill. Oh, um, I have one for for, for question on on loading coils. Um, watching your videos and Tom M zero M, thinking what the rest of his pulse is yeah. and Rolex stuff. Um, I'm thinking of trying to build a base coil for your twelve point four to get one sixty off the forty meter element. I'm yeah. not. It should work electrically. Looks good on paper. Yeah. Um, that's down the road once I get the 12.4 up. But I do have like 480 meters of wire in the ground so I can do 160. Okay. Uh, I just asked a couple of questions. And so this would be 160 on a 12.4. Yeah. Be, uh, be yeah. Okay. 12.4. I'll use the, I'll use a, um, uh, uh, like a UMPE uh, plastic, uh, rod to separate the 40 coming off so the 40 would go off into a relay normal would be 40 meters relay closed would put the, the yeah. coil feed 160 yeah. to the top of it and up the yeah okay so um uh, dr george whatever his name is you know you remember the old myth that all 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 ham radio operators were taught that all verticals need 120 quarter wave um radials well, actually, that was the 1928 research by RCA Labs. There was three guys who did it. But, in fact, it's not until you read the papers, you discover these were eighth-wave radiators. And they discovered that to compensate for the eighth wave, you needed 120 radians to sort of boost it back up again. So you're... Um, just beware that if you... I mean, there will be some loss... Um, not only with the coil, but with your ground, with your radials. I mean, without getting into too much detail, frankly, because I can't yeah. bullshit you guys. Yeah, Cal, I used all uh, 11 uh, studs on the uh, radial plate. Okay. Doubled them up with yeah. four radials per stud, okay. 5.5 meters per radial. Yeah. So, yeah. like, there's 88 out there for 482, which should be about all, pretty close to three wavelengths at yeah. So at least I've got enough. I think I've got a pretty good ground plane. But um, I figured yeah. I'd throw it down now while I was doing it. Just oh, so well, according, according to uh, Dr. George, or his name is, ideally you want, um, it says 4,800 here. <laughs> Can't be right. 480 maybe. But okay. Um, what, what did, did you we'll calculate it as well, John? No, he, he said he had 480 down. 480 meter right. radial. So he's got yeah. four X the 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 lowest band. Four times, yeah. Okay. Well, he might need more, but but um that's fine. 
The point is, right, because, and I know someone else wanted to ask a question. The point is, I get I get a lot of emails from people, you know, fantasists, really, probably. Oh, you know, I've got this property here, and, you know, it slopes away, and then I've got this, and there's a tree here. And, and if I run a wire from there to there, is it work? Will it work? So I made a video. Uh, uh, the reason I made the video is so I could send people to it, okay? The will it work? Because the will it, the, the definition of will it work? Um, where do you want to start? Rowley did an experiment years ago in his radio amateur class that he used to do in New Zealand. And he loaded up a six inch nail on 10 meter band and made a DX contact. You know, yeah, it worked. Couldn't be very good, right? So, like all these things, they're everything, if you can get the art, if you can get a match at your end and get some RF out, it'll always work, right? But I think people forget, don't understand what they're asking. They don't know what the definition of will it work actually is, okay? Because you, it, you can go on and on and on. I had a 120 foot tower with a three, uh, two element 40 meter Yagi, you know. Well, I can tell you that plumbing well worked. So I had to follow 20 meters. Because, you know, it was on the one rotator and there with a big band, you know, and it was daytime in the afternoon. And with I'm facing uh, east from here, I think it was. And I, I was just running numbers into bloody Indonesia and stuff on CQ Worldwide or something. Uh, I, 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 I've never heard Indonesia at two o'clock in the afternoon ever in my life. But, you know, I was 120 foot up on a two element full size, four DX commander poles, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just bits of wire or oh, Heath Robinson. Got it working, huh? Um, so, but I, I could never achieve that, even with one of um, one of John Gendron's fancy, you know, uh, <laughs> triangular arrays. We would need sixteen triangular arrays, John, and uh, all faced together uh, to get the same. But there we are. Thank uh, you. Uh, you had a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, I just want to say thanks uh, for everything that you've done. You, you can't imagine how you've helped me and John uh, and Darcy as well in the club. But uh, I just wanted to say I appreciate everything you've done. And the quick question is, um, was there ever a moment in your DX commander journey here where, or an obstacle that you had to overcome where you're like, God, I just don't, is this going to happen? Yeah. Is, was there anything like that or was it yes. just like? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i'd have to write that well i am going to write um this is not a secret i'm going to write a book um because i've read you know out of thin air and you know antennas for beginners and whatever else but i got a book in mind it's really fun book all the antennas i've built antennas i haven't built how they work all the tips and tricks everything i know with, with little diagrams and everything else but i think the preface uh, it's going to have to have uh, some of the disasters along the way, you know, from you know, finding somewhere to run a business from and, uh, you know, to, to discovering, for instance, all the black plates that we had been supplying for about three weeks were bursting into flames, um, you know, and, and having to uh, tell everybody, stop using them. I met, I, you know, I, I'll get some white one, then we have to ship them all out, you know. So, you know, to start with, you know, there wasn't much profit in it, really. And uh, because running a business means you have to have money in the bank. You have to make a profit. You have to uh, keep growing the money in the bank because as other things grow, you know, we take on Lockie, my son, you know, Wendy wants a new handbag, you know, whatever. Uh, you, you've got to keep growing the money in the bank. And, the, and then you need to keep running out of stock. We'd running out of stock all the time. Because I could never, even to this day, I can't quite get my mind around. Because for five years, I think I think we doubled, nearly doubled every year, and uh, you can never quite get your mind around how many have we have got to order. You know, I mean, I used to order like two hundred reels of wire. I think that's a year. You know, well, Lockie shipped two hundred reels of wire in a week before now. You just cannot. I cannot. Under, I mean, DX Engineering, you know, came on. I said, recommend us an order, you know, for three months. So I went back through, said, got Wendy to do the reports. I went, bloody hell. 
I've got to ask them. I can't tell you because I've signed agreements and everything. You know, the order's going to be this much? Four tonnes of gear for three months. Ah, so, so I, th- I think it's scale, just really. And I'm not a very good manager, so luckily Wendy is kind of on the ball. It keeps me in check. If you know, I go off the rails, you see. Completely, I keep going off the rails all the bloody time because I'm a thinker and a, oh, let's do this and let's do that. Uh, I've never, and since I'm 64 now, I started a, a first business at 40. I don't think I've ever switched my phone off for a day in the 25 years. Still, to this day. And uh, which is why I stopped making YouTube videos. I thought, I've got to get out of this. You know, I've just got to do stuff for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's a very, it's fascinating. It really is. It must be kind of cool, though, because, you know, when you go out and somebody says, oh, DX Commander, they know exactly what you're talking about. Or yeah. they see yours. And, and you know, I, I'd like, I like to say I was DX Commander before DX Commander was cool, ah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. But but it is it is really amazing. And you've done a phenomenal job of creating a really amazing product. But yeah. it's all the it's all the videos, it's the fun emails, it's the it's it's this kind of stuff behind it that really makes it special. Do you that, think? I, I absolutely our boxes. Yeah. <clears throat> because you know, I said to Wendy, and it was well, we were in the car today, because we had to go and emerge and take up get some aluminium plates all of a sudden run out of something else so we drove it's about 50 miles away and um she said have you done the price increase i said yeah it's i said but there was a guy who kept asking me you know when the 12.4s were in or whatever it was and and i'll get round to the story in a minute but um Finally, I emailed him. I said, okay, they're all in stock and everything else. I, there is a bit of a price increase. If you can remember the price it was, because uh, th- I'll have to look it up, let me know and we'll do you a special deal. And he said, that's all right. I'll just pay the price, you know. And um, and Wendy said, yeah, but he, he they, they do that because we're a family business and they've probably followed along with you and they think, well, it's probably worth that, you know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And it's funny, you know, because um, Martin Lynch, you know, the, uh, there's a shop in the, in the UK and they do our polls, you know. Now, I get people who break their polls, you know, oh, as a drumstick, but, you know, they send me a picture. Oh, I've broken my polls. Oh, send me a picture and tell me how it happened, you know. They go, oh, well, I stood on it or it fell over and it landed on the fence and whatever else. Uh, because I'm so brutally frank, I said, look, you know, if it's my problem, I'll just send you another one. But if it's your, can you let me know and just be straight with me if you had a part to play in this? I'm not going to do you. I'll still come up with a deal, right? Because I don't want to make profit twice. And, and they're completely honest. Oh, yeah, you know, my dog and whatever else. Um, but it's funny, you, the big stores, you know, I've got giga parts, you know, they're going to have people trying to walk all over them all the time aren't they Uh, what and and then it got me thinking what's the difference between why are my customers so polite with us i don't i actually don't know is it because we're so straight with them open question to you yeah i I think it's i think it's because they kind of feel like they know you Uh from the youtube and uh they laugh along they know your family they know your your dog and your house and your you know Honestly, yeah. I, I do. You may maybe you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> you may not you remember were... this. I remember this. Right. I ordered a DX Commander from you. Uh-huh. And I ordered the soda pole and you sent me the full the full one. Oh, right. This is way back in the day. And I said, Hey, I want I I I'd like this soda pole. You said keep the other one. Right. Keep the other one, I'll send you a new one. Yeah. I was like, dang. You know, I mean, you're not going to get that from Giga Parts or, you know, these other guys, honestly. And I think that's that's maybe one of the differences, to be honest. <clears throat> okay, but you see, I suppose what it is, I I I need to make x x amount. Okay, once I've made my x amount, I don't actually need any more. 
Because for all my life, I've chased money, okay? And it's, and it's always dripped out my hands all the time. And I just stopped doing that now. And uh, now I make money easier than I've ever made before. And I, I'm not even trying to make money. I'm just trying to do a good job and do but things you love right. what you do. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. And, and, and it shows. I mean, you are a genuine person. You're generally proud of your product. You care about your customers. Mm. And it shows. And, you know, again, that's why you have such a loyal following. Plus, the product just absolutely performs. So there's no doubt. I think and now the 2024 specs, mm -hmm. base, I just call it that because you know, it sounds good. But um, I, I think now, I, I can't believe that. I feel like writing to all the customers from 2018 and 19 saying, throw all the DX gone stuff you got away. I'll just replace it, right? Because I'm so embarrassed. But at the time, it was the right price and it was, you know, I mean, it is more money now, but the, the quality is completely different. Uh, Anybody else have any questions? And I'm sober now. And you're sober now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could tell you, I got stuff from 2018 and I've got stuff I ordered last year. And, you know, even though 2018, you know, you say the quality wasn't as good, the design wasn't as good, it still worked. And yeah, you're right. You know, yeah, it's it's not as slick. I mean, the gray plates, gray poles, the the new slits in the in the plates and stuff. That's all cool. And the new wire, yeah. the yeah. pipe wraps. Don't forget the pipe wraps. The uh, oh, yeah, the, the tighteners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the twist yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. All right. Uh, Anybody else have any? Um, well, uh, Jeremy, who's he. He's not on the screen, but I think he has a microphone. He had some real issues with setting up the expedition in a 12.4. And I think he says he finally got it working now. Jeremy, you want to comment on that at all? Maybe not. I don't know. He just put something in the in the thing. He said he got everything set up with the expedition. Oh, he doesn't have a mic. He okay. said he got everything set up with the expedition and he's ready. The point it. is, if you ask me a difficult question, I'll hit this button. <laughs> <laughs> well we won't keep you brother it's after <laughs> thank you so much Callum I can't uh, it means the world fun. for us to have you and uh, we love having you so we'll say 73 to you this evening and if there's something we can do for you please just let us know uh, just being there for me John that's very kind of you all of you thank you very much Absolutely. indeed for having me good night Callum have a good All right, evening. I'll oh, hit the button said hello. cheerio thank you Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye Callum. Now. Good night.